Welcome to today's episode of Rainer on Leadership, your online home for leadership lessons and advice for the local church. I'm Tom Rainer. I'm joined by Sam Rainer. We're always thankful for Amy Jordan. And you can't see Amy. Uh, if, you, if you're watching this on YouTube, I know we got you are maybe listening to it on podcasts, but you can't see Amy. Amy is there with her white headphones. But also, on, you cannot see on the screen. I wish we could bring him up is Akeem Morella. And he brought Rita, his wife, with him. We have not seen her in forever. So hello, Rita. Hello, Akeem. Glad to have you two on the show, even though the rest of the world can't see you. Thank you for the production area that uh, production that you are doing in that area right now. So thank you, Amy. Thank you, Akeem. And always good to see you, Rita, as well. Kind of reminds me of a Beatles song. You know, lovely Rita, meet her maid. Yeah. I don't remember that one. No, I know a handful of Beatles songs. But I don't know that one. Okay, Reed, I hope that's not offensive to you. I just there things trigger sixties music in my mind. So my apologies. You mean everything I, oh, triggers sixties music in your mind. That's true. Anything that she gave anything me the thumbs to up. trigger your sixties music. Well, Rita and Akeem are in my generation, so they get they get this just a little bit. We we may have we may have had a our upbringing in different countries, but the Beatles were ubiquitous globally, so they remember they remember so well. Hey, today we're going to be talking about the great reshuffling. I love talking sociology, uh, the, where, what has happened, particularly since the since the. Um, uh, pandemic. I love talking about this and the future of the church. So this, this is going to be a lot of fun. Before we get to that, I want to thank our sponsor, Southeastern Seminary. Southeastern Seminary is committed to helping you get the training you need to pursue ministry anywhere around the world. Love Danny Aiken. Love what he's doing at Southeastern. Appreciate his leadership and all the good team that is there, like Dr. Chuck Lawless, and Dr. Art... Um, Art Rayner uh, and, and the rest of the group that is there. Uh, hey, if you apply to Southeastern and you put in this and the uh, use this code, Church Answers, one word, no space, Church Answers, plural, they'll waive the application fee. It'll be a great place to go get your ministry training. But going to Southeastern for them, seminary is not just about theological education. It's truly about ministry preparation. Explore degrees, schedule a visit, or apply today at sebts.edu, that's sebts.edu, or see it in the show notes. Sam, we're going to talk about this great reshuffling, often called the, uh, a part of it is the great retirement, but you call it the great reshuffling. Great resignation. Because that is, yeah, that's right, the great resignation. And you call it the great reshuffling. But I, because hope, I hope people is, that are retiring do have a great retirement. <laughs> I'm, yes, I am. I am retired. I understand that very fully. Um, but the great reshuffling is a more comprehensive term in my mind, what is taking place. Yeah. I mean, w when you're hearing about what's going on with p people quitting their jobs in the United States by the millions, and I, I say the United States because that's the data that we're looking at. Um, I mean, it's four and five million a month that have been quitting their jobs and the media has been reporting on it. And, the, you know, it's and amazing. It, yeah, it's it's just an unprecedented amount of people that are quitting and they're calling it the great resignation. I just don't like the term resignation in terms of the church. Uh, there are people that are moving around. There's people in your churches that are moving around. There's pastors that are moving around, but I'm going to call it the great reshuffling because you don't resign from the church. You, you, if you do need to leave a church, you should go to a, another church. So that's why I prefer the term, the great reshuffling. It implies maybe a little more positive spin on what some are calling the great resignation. But but I want to be clear. There, there's some people who are leaving the local church and going to other ministries, and you know that's Correct. okay. I did that. Y yes, I did that. I yeah, left the local church, went to a seminary. Uh, Mike Stottlemyre, uh, Church Growth Services. Oh, I love he was his a story. pastor. Great story. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was a pastor, and then he got a call to uh, be a part of Church Growth Services, which is an incredible, incredible, uh, not, to say fundraising would minimize their word, their, their stewardship, generosity, uh, they, they are a favorite. But Mike's another example of a pastor that left the church but stayed in ministry. So I just want to clear that up. There are a few of us that leave churches and still stay in ministry. Yeah, and I would encourage anybody right? that needs help with generosity or stewardship in their church to call Mike because he's he's been a pastor. He knows what's going on in your world, 
and he also serves at a great company. So we'll put a link in the show notes down there. Oh yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's talk about this great reshuffling, Sam. Push pull. That's a that's a Brad Wagner original. It is. I'm, I, I am the, I am taking his foundation and built his foundation and building upon it. So I'm gonna call this the push pull and pray factor. Um, but you know, there's the push factor is you know you're, there's a reason to leave. The pull factor is there's a reason to go someplace else. So you're you are pushed away for some reason. It doesn't have to be a negative reason, but sometimes it is. And there's a pulling, and usually the pull factor is positive. Uh, should always be positive. But you you shouldn't do anything until you pray. So don't just leave your church. Consider the push factor. Okay, what might be pushing me away? The pull factor, what I might be drawn to, and have I prayed through it? Then, and, and by the way, the push, pull, pray, you've expanded the Brad push and pull to the push, pull, pray. You go through those three, and that's going to help you discern a call as much as anything I know. Yeah, you can't really know the push and the pull factors completely until you pray. Um, and, right, yeah, exactly. And, and, and I realize that sometimes the push factor is greater than the pull factor, and sometimes the pull factor is greater than the push factor. But if I'm making a decision about whether I'm going to leave a church for whatever reason, I'm, I'm kind of looking for those two things. You know, what's pushing me away? What's What am I being pulled towards? And have I, have I prayed through it all? Um, so I'm going to call it the push-pull. Push-pull-pray. I like it. Here's something we need to consider in the great reshuffling. It's a demographic reality. Uh, let's talk about three generations. Boomers, those born between 1946 and 1964. At the time they were being born, the largest generation in America's history, about 76 million live births. They are compared to two other generations, Gen X, born 1965 to 1979. Yeah, that's correct. 1965 to 1979. And then the millennials, the largest generation in, in America's history, 1980 to 2000. Now, here, here's the reality. Boomers populated the, and still do the pulpit in great numbers. When they retire, we're not seeing sufficient numbers in those other two generations who are in vocational ministry or pastoral ministry. There's not enough of them to replace the existing boomers. That's exactly right. Or the retiring boomers. Yeah, that's exactly right. The median age of pastors has been going up for the last 20 years, and it's approaching 60 in terms of, you know, how, what, how old is a typical pastor? Um, right now it's in late 50s. And nothing wrong with being in your late fifties, by the way, but there's not enough people. The reason that it's very young. Well, that's the reason yeah, you could think that, sure. Um, and the older I get, the the younger it appears. Um, but there's just not enough people, not enough pastors that are younger that are coming up into the ministry. Gen X uh, has some strong leaders, but they're popular. Like the, just the number of people in the in Generation X is is much smaller. The millennials and boomers. So you have the, just the demographic reality. There just aren't as many people in that generation. And then millennials is the largest generation, but from a ratio perspective, from a percentage perspective, there's just not as many millennial pastors. So this is this is a very real problem for the church in, let's say, North America. It's going to be different in other countries. Um, but this demographic reality is is something that I don't think enough people are talking about. And I don't think enough people realize how grave it is going to be in five or seven years. Well, related to this, and it, these are not mutually exclusive, there are fewer people that have a sense of call to pass, to be a pastor, and that's going to continue, whether they're in the millennial or Gen X, X generation or others to come, eventually Gen Z or whatever they're called. You got fewer people that are sensing a call to ministry. And one of the things that I urge churches to do is to call out the call, to, to be about reminding people that God is calling pastors and God is calling global missionaries and God is calling other people positions people to other positions in vocational ministry we need to call out the call more because we're not hearing about and we're not seeing it in our seminaries and bible colleges and other places that people want or sense a call to ministry that's an issue it is an issue so we take the demographic reality that's occurring um with the the, the average pastor is a little older um that those who are younger there are fewer of them on a percentage basis that want to be pastors. So you kind of go, okay, what does this mean? Well, here's what it means. 
there's going to be more church adoptions out of necessity. Like there's going to be more, we, we, a lot of people call them mergers. I, I like, I prefer the term adoption. We've talked about that on some previous episodes. Oh, your, 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 your articulation of that phrase, your invention of that word is the best one yet. Yeah. The adoption. Yeah. There, there's just going to be these churches that combine with other families and get adopted by healthier and larger churches. So this, this idea of multi-site and in, especially this idea of adoption is going to pick up steam because it's going to have to. Because a church is going to say, we, we need to go find a pastor, you know, a church of 20, 30, 40, 50 people, and they're going to say, we don't, there isn't one available. Um, so they're going to just see more church adoptions out of necessity, uh, which gets us into a, a resource that I'd like to provide for our listeners and give them a pretty good discount on it because church revitalization is a key part of this. And we've got a We've got an offer that I'd like to extend to those who are part of the podcast, part of the part of the Rainer on Leadership community, whether it be YouTube or um, whether it be uh, through your favorite podcasting app. Uh, we've got a resource called Four Steps to Revitalization, and you can get 60% off through May 7th. So go get this resource at churchanswers.com. Uh, you can type in the coupon code for the number four steps, R-O-L, which stands for Rainer on Leadership, and uh, only you. You feel special when you go get it and you put in the coupon code because it's it's only and that's special. It's only available to you. Four steps R O L. Uh, it's the resource four steps to revitalization. Sixty percent off. Um, you can get it for only one hundred thirty one dollars. Pretty good deal. And it'll help. It'll help with understanding some of what we're talking about, particularly when it ties to church revitalization. Because what ninety percent of churches self identify as needing church revitalization, at least in some part of the church. At least at least ninety percent. Yeah, in a significant part of the church. And uh, by the way, uh, that featured resource, the coupon code expires on May 7th. So just wanted to mention May 7th, that. May 7th, 2022. For those of you who are listening. Have you ever seen Mission Impossible, the original show, where the message would just go up like that? That's what's going to happen to that code. Yeah, if you're listening. In so don't even be holding, don't holding it on midnight on May 7th. And if you're listening It'll in exploding. 2023 or 2024 or 2025, it, it expired a long time ago. Yes. And I may have two by that time. So we'll <laughs> oh, see gosh. <laughs> so younger pastors are going to lead many of these adoptions, Sam. They're going to be the ones that are going to take the, the helm. Yeah. On Again, that. it's a demographic reality. So, all right, who's going to be leading these adoptions? It's going to be pastors in their 30s and 40s and 50s um, of small and mid-sized churches. And there's going to be two or three churches in the area that are like, yeah, we can't find a pastor. Can we be adopted by you? Um, and that's just going to, that, that happened with South, that happened with South side and it, West Bright. It did. It, they didn't it came, have a pastor. We were fostering them, which means that we had a kind of a, a, an arrangement to help them. We were a church helping another church, a healthier church, helping a church that's less help, less healthy. And, um, they eventually just said, yeah, what we, we don't see this going, like we don't foresee us being able to do this on our own. We just need to become part of your family. And that's when we started the adoption process. Um, that's just going to be happening a whole lot more, and it's going to be pastors in their 30s, 40s, and 50s that that lead the charge on a lot of these uh, adoptions. And you're going to see mid-sized and even small churches be adopting other smaller churches, and it, it's going to become a phenomenon that it's that's even more so now. And it's just going to be done out of necessity. I don't necessarily like it. So if you're sitting here listening to this, going, "Well, I don't know that I like that. I don't know that I like it either." But we gotta we gotta start with what's reality. It's, it's, it's reality. We are estimating that in 2022, the year in which we are releasing this podcast, we're estimating that the number of church closures that has typically been around six thousand will increase to as many as ten thousand. There's good reason for us to do that. You'll never know precisely how many churches close their doors. I hope many of those are adopted. So that that presence, that ministry presence in that neighborhood or that community can continue on instead of the doors closing and then something else taking that that presence. And that brings up this the six point, Sam, neighborhood churches. We're talking about keeping their doors open. You have been forecasting this almost to the point of advocacy. The neighborhood church has the potential to grow quickly now. It is not going to be. Uh, the, the church that people pass by like they used to, uh, it'll become a destination point for many people who live within those areas. Correct. There is a trend that is occurring, and we know this because there's been studies done on it, where people aren't driving as far to church. 
and they desire to go to church in their area. Um, and what this means is that all of those neighborhood churches that are sprinkled everywhere, um, that's not a statement on baptism, that's just a statement on geography. Um, all the horn, <laughs> I know, horny. I know, that was bad, that was bad. You're coming your father, I know, be careful. I know, all of our Presbyterian brothers and sisters are like, really, you went there? Um, sorry, bad joke. <laughs> and Methodist. It, yes, yes. Um, as people settle, and by the way, they are settling, and most don't realize this, the millennial generation moves less than any other generation preceding them. People think that we're yes. this transient generation. We are not, and I say we because I'm part of the millennial generation, we move less than previous generations. So people are settling, particularly with work from home. They're not wanting to drive long distances to go to a church. So the, the concept of a regional church is a good one, but you're going to see less regional churches, more neighborhood churches. And the key word in this six point is potential. It doesn't mean that just because you're a neighborhood church, that people are just, they're just going to show up. You actually have to do the work that you should do, and you have to be the kind of church that is a healthy church. They may come to your church to visit, but they're not going to stay unless you're doing what you should do. So I'm going to say that the neighborhood church movement has potential, great potential, but we're not there yet. Um, but if you pastor and a church I, I like this, you need to be paying attention. I don't want to rehash the resource again, but... Uh, just, just, just kind of reminder that four steps resource that we're offering. If you take the four steps principle of that foundational resource that we have, and you apply it to the neighborhood church, all of a sudden you've got God-given ingredients to become a growing neighborhood church. You said it well, Sam. Just because you're a neighborhood church doesn't mean you're going to grow. Just because neighborhood churches in general are becoming destination points. But you take those four principles or four steps and apply it to a neighborhood church, any church for that matter, and you're going to see a lot of intentionality about closing the back door, about reaching your community, et cetera. And you're going to see a lot of great things happen. So I think you're right. Neighborhood churches have a potential. This next point is another point that excites me. We're talking about co-vocational and bivocational pastors. A bivocational pastor, according to our definition, is someone who has to maintain at least a one other job other than the church to support the family. Uh, it's required. It's, it, is, it is something that is necessary. It may or may not be a choice. A co-vocational pastor is someone who by decision says, I'm not going to leave my job in the marketplace, but I also want to serve in a church. And it is not a have to as much as I want to. I don't want to demean by vocational pastors because many of them want to as well. And we admire their ministry. It's just this it's, it's basically an issue of finances between co-vocational and bivocational. So we're going to see that those number of pastors increase. We're going to see full time specialty positions go down. And as this is happening, we're going to see a lot of reshuffling in the type of people the type of positions and the way they're trained. That's correct. You're 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 going to see. So as the potential of the neighborhood church is captured, and I believe that we can do this, you're going to see a need for more generalists than specialists. So a regional church has a lot of specialists, and those kinds of positions, while still good and valid and needed, there's just going to be less of them. Uh, but you're going to see more of a need for a generalist, a, a, a bivocational pastor at a neighborhood church, a co-vocational pastor, that need will go up as the trend of neighborhood churches goes up. Um, so there is a great reshuffling occurring. Um, it's not a great resignation. I refuse to call it that because people aren't leaving the ministry completely. They're doing some different things. Some of people are going to other churches. Some people are starting ministries or going to other ministries. And, and I champion all of that. If God has called you to do it, I think it's great. I say, go do it. I would caution you. You know, like we said, watch the push and the pull factor. Pray through it. Make sure you're making a good decision and one that honors God. Uh, but it is occurring. We, we can't overlook it. That's why we're talking about it. Um, but I think the future is bright in many ways. We've got a lot of work to do. And we need to train up some more pastors. That's a desperate need. And we need some churches to revitalize. But if we can get through that, which I think we can, we're going to see a pretty phenomenal neighborhood church movement over the next 25 years. 
I think this information, though challenging, is exciting. And I think we're moving into a new paradigm. Church Answers is going to continue to do the work, the research, the observation, and keep you informed about what is taking place in this great reshuffling. There are all types of demographic, psychographic, all types of vocational issues at work right now. And we're going to keep you in the know. We're at a time of significant change globally, yes, but specifically in churches. And this bodes our watching so that we can keep you informed about what is going on. So this is good stuff, Sam. Uh, speaking of good stuff, every time you talk about the filament Bible, you talk about get, that good stuff. I get excited about, about it because I really like it. And, you know, I, I see the ad copy and I know it's there and I know I'm supposed to read it, but I'd much rather just talk about my passion uh, for the filament Bible collection that comes from Tyndale. A uh, great publisher, great Bible. Uh, what I love about this is, you know, it's 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 in print, but then you you scan your phone, your iPad on the page number, and it's I say magic. That's probably not. It's spirit led. It's a spirit led movement that occurs, and it connects. It connects the printed Bible to all these digital resources per page number. So it it's it knows like it just it just knows. Okay, you're reading about Moses on this particular page, it's going to pull up all of this stuff about that particular story, or Jesus and one of his healings or one of his miracles. And okay, you're in the New Testament. So it pulls up all the stuff around that. And it does it by page number in the filament Bible. It's mind blowing. All right. It's mind blowing. They have got study notes, devotionals, videos, worship music, curated content per page number on the Bible. I cannot. Per page. Per, I know. It's like, like owning a massive library. So we formed this partnership with Tyndale. We love all of what they do. But the filament Bible is one of those things where they're like, oh, yeah, we have this filament Bible and you should check it out. I check it out. I'm like, how have I not known this before? I felt so bad. But now that I know, I feel like I got to tell everyone. People ask me all the time, what Bible should I get? And I'm like, this is an easy recommendation. The filament Bible, it's a New Living Translation, which is my favorite translation. So readable, so accurate. And it connects your phone, your iPad to all of these digital resources. I mean, I recommend it and to my church members, they come back to me and they're like, this is awesome. I'm like, I know, I know. All right, enough of the filament Bible. You just you are, you are giving them the longest ad support of anybody I know. Because I really like it. I really like it. Yes, you Go do. get it. Filament yes, Bible. You it, you check it out. You'll be recommending it to everyone just like me. There we go. All right. <laughs> well, Thank you, Sam. You can close it. Out. All right. Thanks for all of you listeners who heard my what was supposed to be ad copy. It was actually a, a very positive rant, um, but I will stand. It was. It was a Rainer rant. I will stand mm. by my Rainer rant because I believe in what we are recommending. So thank you again for joining us today on Rainer on Leadership. Be sure to watch on YouTube, subscribe on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever podcasting app that you use. Join us online at churchanswers.com where we are growing healthy churches together. <laughs>